I have a unique uh, message. You're going to really want to pay attention to what the Lord is going to have me say. Unity in Christ has been crying out for a while. We don't want to be the end time generation. And I'll and I be honest with you, the Lord just has me saying these things. Well, I retired last week, last Friday, a week ago today, and I spent the whole week silent just with the Lord. And now I understand our purpose, the purpose for this channel. The purpose for this channel is to bring about disciples of Jesus, for Jesus Christ. Or you might as well say, of Jesus Christ, because we are one body, we are of him, we are in him. He's the head, he's calling us into one body. And for, well, pretty much since you and Christ got together, I'd be hollering out stuff like, we want to step out beyond ourselves. This is the church out here. Called to do these things, but never quite understanding why. Until this week. And I have to tell you, a week ago, like I said, I retired. The Thursday before I retired, I had a dream. And in this dream, my arm, my right arm was on a chopping block. And an ax came down and chopped it right off of the forearm. And I heard a voice say, if you lie, I'll cut off your right arm. And I woke up, and I'm like, you know, so I'm like going to the Lord with this, you know. Is this just a dream? Lord, are you trying to tell me something? Am I lying? Have I lied? And so I went on the, the day, you know, I went to work and everything. And, and then uh, the next night, which is my last day at my job, you know, and, uh, same Zach dream. My right arm was on some kind of chopping block. It looked like, like a horse. The exact same dream. It, it, an axe came down and severed my forearm right there and it says, if you don't tell the truth, I'll cut your right arm off. I knew it was from the Lord. I went to the Bible, and right away, this is what I read. I have set the Lord always before me, because he is at my right hand. I shall not be moved. Whoa. So if I lie, in other words, if I say this is from the Lord and it's not, he will move me. He'll cut my right hand off. If I hear from the Lord and I don't want to speak it, it's the same thing. So either I lie or don't tell the truth. He'll cut my right hand off. So I'm honored to be his servant. I'm honored to call people out to become one body in Christ Jesus. The first church knew what it was to be disciples. Today's church knows what it is to preach the word, but not be disciples. We're commanded to do both, to preach the word throughout the whole world and to make disciples. And this is what the Lord has shown me. It's not your pastor's fault. They don't know how to make disciples because we've been conditioned not to make disciples. Discipleship is found at the power of the cross. We're going to talk about all this. The next three videos, I'm going to be talking about discipleship, the power of the cross. The power of the cross really is where we find our peace, our power, and our purpose. But we're doing a very, very bad job telling people you must pick up your cross daily and follow after Jesus. What it is to be the righteousness of God in Christ. What it is to be crucified with Christ. What it is to be his disciple. We made these little communes, and we call it love. But yet, 
the judgment that's come upon this land has nothing to do with the unsaved. It always has something to do with the people of God. If you are a Christian in America, or even a Jew for that fact, this is the Judean Christian faith. This is our vineyard. But we exercise, we exercise no dominion. We didn't exercise any of the power we have as being the body of Christ. All authority was given to Jesus, and that same authority should be alive in us today. But it's not. And we're going to talk about all this stuff. So the next three videos are going to be concerned with us willing to be suffering servants. And if you're not willing to be a suffering servant, well, you should have some fear of the justice and judgments of God. Now, I can't see hands down, and neither can you, when we have hands down uh, clipped against any YouTube channel now. The only one I can't even see it, the only one who can see it is my producer. And there was a little shorty that came out a few weeks ago, and then there was a close-up of me saying, how about you, church? Do you fear God? And I had 50%. So whatever, you know, uh, ended up being 40 hands up, I had just about many hands down, according to my producer. Again, I can't even see it. And, uh, and the Lord said, that's the problem. You, they don't fear me. The justice and judgments that are coming upon this land is because the church is not exercising their authority in Christ because we don't know what it is to be disciples because we haven't picked up our crosses and followed after him. That's a, so that's going to be the message kind of behind. And we're going we're gonna to talk about all kind of scriptures, all kind of truth as the Spirit leads and guides in the next three videos. The first video, we are going to call it, Willing to Suffer for Christ, if the fear of the Lord is only our reverence. Like a lot of people want to say, there's no reason to fear God, God is only love. Then we better understand what reverence is. We really do. Reverence of the Lord is to have a healthy fear of Him. It really is of His justice and judgments. And in these two statements, I know I can prove this point. Jesus said, you, we, the body, the chosen ones, are the light of the world. Jesus said it. He was speaking faith over us when he said that you are the light of the world. He was calling those things that may not be as though they were. The Jewish word for faith really is to act with firmness. That's what faith means. That's the Hebrew word for faith. Act with firmness, according to the will of God. But we say, well, you know, we don't really know it. I mean, he makes his will plain in the life of Jesus and the life of the disciples. Again, the early church knew what it was to be disciples. They had to be broken up because of the fact that they weren't doing a, the second part, or really the first part, going out and proclaiming all the good news out throughout the whole world. So they had to be broken up. But they knew what it was to be disciples. Now we know how to reach the whole world, but we don't know how to make disciples. And that's from the Lord. That is from the Lord. We are the salt of the earth. Hmm. We can all see this beautiful vineyard called America that we were so blessed with being run over by evil. Why the church is the salt. We are the light. We are the salt. In Luke chapter 2, Simon, led by the Spirit, held baby Jesus in his arms and said, A light to lighten the Gentiles and the glory of thy people, Israel. The glory. We're going to be talking about glory through these next series. 
because we should feel the glory of the cross. And we're going to talk about that. Yet, the Jewish people really didn't fear the judgments and justice of God, did they? Even though it's been throughout history, recorded in history, I'm talking about the Bible. It's the greatest historic book ever written. It was God who brought judgments upon his people Israel. It was God who would raise armies against them. It was God who allowed them to be taken off and scattered among the heathens. It was God that brought judgment upon their land, like you see what's happening in the Western world today, being run over by evil because the church decided we we're not going to make disciples. And again, it's not your pastor's fault. We're being conditioned this way. Another video that my, uh, my producer said there was a lot of hands down. Again, I can't see him. It was when I talked about Joel Osteen. Now, I don't talk about Joel Osteen because he's Joel Osteen. It's the spirit behind Joel Osteen. And that spirit is in the church today where we make it all about ourselves. You know, all about God wants to bless us. God wants to magnify you. He wants to glorify himself in you. You know, and that all might be true, but there's one part missing. We are to suffer for the sake of Christ. We have become his righteousness. We need to take the land back in the name of righteous. We need to be willing to suffer for the sake of the gospel. And there's great peace in suffering. I know we're going to go through all this. Sounds weird. But we became a happy, good, lucky, loving commune. This commune, this, that commune, that. But our love is superficial. If it's not, it has this heart that was willing to suffer for righteous sake. Blessed are those who suffer for righteous sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. We're going to talk about this broad destruction that's come upon his people. It's not the world. His people. Because the world's already condemned. The world is already judged. He's coming back to judge those who call themselves Christians. That's who he's coming back to judge. And broad is the way of destruction, but straight and narrow is that gate. We need to follow Jesus by picking up a cross. And we're going to talk about this. So the next three videos is going to be all concerning about this country, the state of the church, why this is called unity in Christ, stepping beyond ourselves, becoming disciples of Jesus Christ who can follow Jesus and be led by the Holy Spirit. Because if you're not led by the Spirit, you're underneath the law, so your minds will just be worldly because you'll be condemned just like the world. And very few people have become disciples because we don't understand what it is to pick up our cross. We don't feel the glory. The Hebrew word for glory really is weight, the heaviness. We don't feel the heaviness of the cross. And our teachers, our pastors, the leaders of the church don't either. That's why he called me out. That's why this channel. Now, whether you share this message or not, oh, it's all on you because you're still going to be judged the same way. So you should take this seriously. You should share it. You should talk to your pastors about this. You should bring other people in on these next three messages. Listen to what the Spirit is saying. Because whether you hear this message or not, whether you reject it or not, you're still going to be accountable on the last day when Jesus says to you, give an account of yourself. And let me tell you what you should say. Lord, Lord, now that I'm in your presence, I realize I was a disciple only to my pastor and to my church. I was never your disciple. Please forgive me. That's what you have to say. Anything else is just going to be an excuse. 
Well, you know, I read the Bible online. You know, I, I did it five times in my life where I read every day. And I read your Bible in a year. I hardly miss any church, Lord. I prayed. Oh, when we step out, we, you know, we served our community. Oh, that's all fine, Jesus is going to say. But what have you done for me? Every creature needs to hear the gospel. And we're going to go through all this. Every creature, every rat in every city street, every cockroach in every city, in every building, every bearded in the air, everywhere we go, should hear the gospel. That's what discipleship is. So God so loved the world that he gave his only gotten, begotten son. He so loved the world that he, be, that he gave, he gave up. He allowed his son to come as a man, to be crucified for us, for the world. Now I understand what Jesus meant when he says, Father, I pray not for the world, but for those you have given me out of the world. He died for the world because he realized that we were going to make salvation all about ourselves. And no, we cannot do that. We have to pick up a cross daily and follow after him because he loves the whole world. That's why it's our job to share the gospel everywhere we go. People say, well, it's not very wise to share the gospel at work. You might get fired. Well, because you don't know what wisdom is. Wisdom is of the spirit. Wisdom comes to those who are born again. And I said in another video that the Lord let me know my people don't know what it is to be born again. You just don't. We took faith. Meaning, again, the Jewish word for faith is this. To act with firmness. But we took faith out of our businesses. Out of the world. And the light of the world has become a shelter. We are sheltered. We have became a shadow when we're supposed to be the light. And he knew that was going to happen. Which is why he said, when I come back, I'll find faith in earth. Satan is right now sending his kingdom in the middle of the world. Do you know that Saudi Arabia right now own this, these lights, the electricity? And now they want to make even everything out of electricity. They want to run our cars out of electricity. And... Scientists are saying, hey, it's going to cost just as much fossil fuel to run everything by electricity. But, hey, Saudi Arabia will get to even provide oil. So I wonder if that's where St. Plans has set up his kingdom. Hmm. When he becomes the Antichrist of all Antichrist, when he becomes the powerful Christ that everybody's going to think is Christ when he leads everyone to hell. But yet, it's being done on our watch. We don't want it on our watch. That's why we don't want to be the end time generation. That's why we need to step out beyond ourselves. That's what this channel is all about. Second Peter 3.9 states that the Lord is not slack concerning his promises, as some men account slackness, but is long suffering towards us. Not willing that any should perish, that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. We disciples are shepherds. We are to shepherd the shepherd, the flock. You know, I can see Jesus right now just crying, crying out. 
for this world, looking for people to answer his call. Let's see, we made it by ourselves. Isaiah 60. We'll start it here at verse 1. Arise, shine, for thy light is come, and the glory of the Lord is risen upon thee. For behold, the darkness shall cover the earth, and gross darkness the people. But the Lord shall arise upon thee, and his glory shall be seen upon thee. And the Gentiles shall come to thy light, and kings to the brightness of thy rising. Lift up their eyes round about, and see all they gather themselves together. They come to see thy sons shall come from far, and thy daughters shall be nursed at thy side. Then thou shalt see and flow together, and thy heart shall fear and be enlarged, because the abundance of the sea shall be converted unto thee. The forces of the Gentiles shall come, shall come unto thee. When we become his light through discipleship by picking up our crosses, willing to suffer for his sake, people will see. People will notice. People will see the freedom of the cross. Suffering for Christ is great freedom. Sounds strange, but we're going to go through all this. And what he's, <laughs> and, I, and I get a kick out of this. <laughs> so we are the light of the world. Light will always penetrate the darkness. It will always conquer darkness. Light shall never be a shadow, but See, when we're in our walls, that's who we became. We became a shadow, shadow of lights. Because we were devilishly tricked by the devil not to fear God's judgments and justice upon the church. This philosophy, once saved, always saved, is true. Yeah. But salvation doesn't guarantee you heaven. What salvation is, is that you are temporary, suspended from death. That's what salvation is. Go to the Lord. Ask the Lord if this is true. See, the world without Christ is dead already. They're judged already. He's coming back to judge you and I. Not the world. The world's already condemned. Which is our job to be their light, to bring them to Christ. Not your little commune. Not your little commune. He's not calling for you to call people into your little commune. He's calling for discipleship that are willing to go out. It's a spiritual warfare. We're going to talk about all this. And so, so where are the intercessory warriors? Those who are going to war. Those who are going to step out beyond themselves. Not, you know, some little church, oh Lord, you know, God, please move. Please, you know, save people. When you're called to be the light, when you're called to be the salt of the earth, when you're called to be the body of Christ, he is our Lord. He wants to lead us into battle. Now I'm going to go to 59 now. Start here at verse 16. And he saw that there was no man and wondered that there was no intersection, no one doing the will of the Lord, no one stepping out for the Father, no one following the spirit of the living God. Very few disciples. We have all, millions and billions of Christians, but very few disciples. Therefore, his arm brought salvation unto him, and his righteousness it sustained him. For he put on righteousness as a breastplate and a helmet of salvation upon his head, and he put on the garments of vengeance for clothing and was glad with zeal as a cloak. According to their deeds, Accordingly, he will repay furry for his adversaries, recompense to his enemies, to the islands he will repay, he will recompense. So shall they fear the name of the Lord from the west and his glory from the rising of the sun when the enemy shall come in like a flood. The spirit of the Lord shall lift him up, lift up a standard against him and the redeemer shall come to Zion, which is the city of grace, and to them that turn from transgressions in Jacob, says the Lord. As for me, 
This is my covenant with them, says the Lord. My spirit that is upon thee and my words which I put in thy mouth shall not depart out of thy mouth, nor out of the mouth of thy seed, nor out of the mouth of thy seed seed, says the Lord, from henceforth and forever. You know, to me, when I read this, you know what I think of? I think of Ephesians chapter 6. That is a warrior, starting in uh, Ephesians 6.10. That is a warrior. That's not a defensive position. That's someone that the Lord can use to fight his battles. That's what I think when I, when I read about this intersexuary. It's, it's, huh. it's just amazing to me. I'm going to go over here to Matthew. We'll start here at 5.14, Matthew 5.14. You are the light of the world. A city that is set on a hill cannot be hid. Neither do men light a candle and put underneath a bushel or close it in between your four walls. But on a candlestick, on a candlestick, and it give his light unto all that are in the house. Let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father which is in heaven. Well, I don't know. I, you know I'm a, I don't know if I can really go talk about Jesus in the marketplace or in my place of business or the town halls or in schools or as yes, we can. If the Spirit, the living God, if you pick up your cross, it won't be flesh. It won't be wisdom from the world. It'll be God speaking through you. People will get offended. Other people will be praising God for your boldness because they would recognize it's not you, but the spirit of the living God in you. That's what it is to be light. And if you got fired, well, praise be to God. You got fired for righteous sake. Great is your reward in heaven. You don't come out with the flesh. And we're going to be talking about this. We have to come out with the power of the cross. We're willing to be a suffering servant. Let's go back here to 513. Ye are the salt of the earth, but the salt has lost a savior. Wherefore shall it be salted? It is thence for good for nothing but to be cast out and to be trodden underneath the foot of men. Now I'm going to read the commentary out of this Hoffman book about 513. This is what the commentary has to say. Salt has many uses, but in the Old Testament it is most often a purifying agent. As the salt of the earth Jesus' disciples are to purify a corrupt world through their example of righteous living and their proclamation of the gospel. And their proclamation of the gospel. Hmm. That calls for discipleship. However, contaminated salt does not promote purity. The verb translated loss is savior indicates foolish and immoral behavior. It refers to a professing disciple whose unrighteous lifestyle promotes destruction rather than purification. Such salt is only good for spreading over ground where you want to kill vegetation. Well, we can see what's going on in this world. <laughs> Such is the vital effect of an unrighteous disciple's lifestyle. Nothing grows where they go. The verb cast out describes the disposal of something worthless. And the verb trotten alludes to the treatment an immoral disciple receives from the world. See, if you come out in the flesh, if you decide to come out, you'll be trotting down. But you know what's even worse? Is people have a spirit in them. Now, a lot of the church doesn't. I'm, I'm just going to be honest with you. I knew people who were church people all their lives, and the Lord said, lay hands on them. So they received the Spirit. I have work for them to do. They've been brought up in churches. And this is the truth. I'm not going to lose my right hand. I have to tell you the truth. 
So, you know, just because you raise your hand somewhere or lift it up, you're, you're somewhere and somebody said a prayer, doesn't mean you receive the Spirit. I'm just telling you the truth. You don't even know that because there's not a lot of Spirit in the church now because there's not a lot of discipleships. If there was a lot of Spirit in the church, we would see the fruit of it. We would see disciples having to come out and preach in the gospel truth, being a salt of the earth, proclaiming the good news of the gospel. They would be compelled to do it because they're following the Spirit. They're following the Lord Jesus Christ. He's the head, we're the body. And we'll become one when we step out beyond ourselves. We'll become one body in Christ Jesus. But we got little communes of lovely, 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 hubby, dubby, lovey communes. That's who we are. Happy, good, lucky church. And that's not of God. Not willing to suffer for righteous sake. Our lack of fearing God is why this is going on, you know. We lack fearing his judgments and justice, which has come upon our land because of the church. It's come upon us. Look at the world. Look at it. We have the power to rebuke. All power was given to our Lord Jesus Christ. We're his body. We're his armor. We're his sword of the spirit. This is what God chose. Yeah, he can go just break bad and wipe us all out, save a few people, oh, you know. But he loves us, and he gave us an opportunity to show his love in us. Show his power through us. That takes discipleship. Disciples will believe in all the promises of God. A new crop is coming. There will be disciples of Jesus Christ. In other words, these are signs that I believe in my name they should cast out demons. So let's go cast some demons out of people. And if it doesn't happen, so what? You're going out, you're going out, you're laying hands on people because there's a lot of reasons for it. And But the more people who come out, the more the demons hear the gospel truth and see, wow, they're not afraid of us anymore. They're not afraid of the world. The world that the world is demonized. And they're, these Christians, these disciples are no longer scared of us. They will start fleeing these individuals. The miracles I see now out in Waterbury, Connecticut, is nothing about what's going to come when we all step out and start preaching in the streets. I no longer plan to preach just at the green. I plan to preach in every street. I thank God for some other disciples who are coming out now preaching in the streets. You got Jason and his sidekick, Sal. Got me and Miriam. You know, and more people are coming out. Every once in a while, I see another preacher, but these are people who are coming out more consistently. And more and more people will come out being true disciples. They realize, wow, this uh, bald-headed, you know, street pastor is right. He he is right. I did become a disciple of my pastor and my church. I am self-righteous because I don't see myself made the righteousness of God in Christ. We're going to talk about all that. You know, in 1 Corinthians 15.10, Paul says this, But the grace of God, by the grace of God, I am what I am. By the grace of God. And his grace, which was bestowed upon me, was not in vain. Yeah, because he labored. He was a disciple. So were the first church, there were disciples. But I labor more abundantly than them, yet not I, but the grace of God which was with me. This is why Union Christ is always saying, grace is the power of God. To stand upright in his righteousness, to be used for his glory, where people will feel the weight of his conviction coming through us, because glory is weight. That's what it is. We'll talk about more of that in but when we made it about ourselves and our own salvation, well, that, and that's pride. And you should fear being prideful. You're happy. You're seeing the whole world fall in front of you. If you have fear of what's going on, well, that's not of God. And pride is what causes fear because I'm more worried about my, I'm worried, I'm worried about my life. I'm more worried about, that's a form of pride. Well, the whole, can't, uh, 
the, the whole economic system can collapse. So I better, I better put some money aside and, you know, make a little nest aid. Well, that's putting your cares on something other but Jesus. That's putting your cares on the world. That's idolatry. And it's all a form of pride. I'm saved, I'm saved, I'm free, I'm saved. That's pride. And God resists the proud, but gives grace to the humble. Only by grace are we saved through faith in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. It's only by grace. But God resists the proud. That's why we have to follow Jesus. That's why we have to pick up our crosses. Well, again, we're going to get into all that. And now, do we know that we have a humble spirit? How do we know? How do we know that we have a humble spirit? Well, it's because it's about the lost. That's how you know you have a humble spirit. That's why the Beatitude starts off with, Blessed are those who mourn, for they shall be comforted. For blessed are those. This, no, it starts off saying, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Then it goes on, Blessed are those who mourn, for they shall be comforted. Being poor in spirit means you just didn't raise your hand and say some prayer or get baptized and a bunch of people clap for you. No, it means that you emptied yourself out and you said, Lord, I am nothing without you. I need you. I want you. I accept your lordship. I accept the cross. I accept the power of the cross. I accept you into my life. I need you in my life. I want you in my life. I desire you in my life. And you can speak it out. You can go to your church and just speak it out. He is my Lord. He is my Lord. He is my Lord and he is my God. I am nothing without Jesus, but I am everything in him. I love Miriam because she doesn't know the Bible, but she emptied herself out and she just started serving people. And the Lord is teaching her. She's a disciple of Jesus Christ. It's Jesus himself that's teaching Miriam. It's Jesus himself that's teaching me. That's what John, 1 John meant when he said, you know, the anointing they receive, no man ought to teach you, but the anointing himself will teach you all things. And will not lie. It will only be a truth. And we won't live a lie. We won't be phony Christians. We'll be Christians of power. Because we will pick up the cross, and there's power in the cross. We can do the things Jesus says that we can do. Greater things Jesus said that you would do, which means the body of Christ, disciples who come together and follow him, pick up the cross daily and follow after him, becoming disciples of Jesus Christ, will do even greater things than what he has done. But we deny the power because, well, we're not disciples. We're preachers. And we're not disciples. We learn, but we never walk in the knowledge of truth. So what is true humility? What is it? What is it to become a disciple? How do we get there? Well, you know, let's go to Philippians. It, it gives us the answer right there. Only let your conversation be as it becometh the gospel of Christ. So our conversation should all be about the, about, uh, the gospel of Christ and should line up with the gospel of Christ. That whether I come and see you or else be absent, this is Paul speaking, I may hear of your affairs that you stand fast in one spirit, with one mind, striving together for the faith of the gospel. Striving together for the faith of the gospel. Again, the Hebrew word for faith. Well, it's not written Hebrew, it's Greek. These were, these were Jews. Faith, the Hebrew word for faith is act with firmness. Act, put your faith in action. That's faithfulness. And in nothing, terrified by your adversaries. You shouldn't be afraid about nothing. So what? They don't like you talking about Jesus at work. Oh, so what? Do it. I hear you. I hear you that they don't like it. At first, I was isolated. 
but people came around to hear it. I was giving my producer testimony. I couldn't believe the people who were crying when I left. I never saw anything like that. Tears swollen up when I left. So they got the message. They heard. I went from isolation to people crying when I left. Because I'm not ashamed of the gospel. Because I know if I am ashamed of the gospel, my Lord and my God will be ashamed of me in front of his heavenly Father. So in nothing be terrified by your adversary, which is to them is, is an evident token of prediction. But to you is salvation and that of God. For unto you it is given in the behalf of Christ not only to believe on him, but also to suffer for his sake. To believe on him and to suffer for his sake. Oh, I don't like that. <laughs> I try to avoid suffering. There's great peace and joy in suffering. You might not be happy, but you have that joy, that power, that peace, and no one can steal from you. I like to always say, I said this a few times, Paul and Silas were not happy about being stoned and beaten and thrown in the middle of prison. But at midnight, everybody heard him praising, singing songs to the Lord. And when the angel shook that place up and chains fell off, and everything, nobody wanted to escape. They wanted to hear more. That's what would happen if you just pick up your cross. We'll get into what picking up your cross is in another video. Having the same conflict you saw in me and now hearing me. So Paul, being in prison, being stoned a few times, one time he thought for dead, beaten with stripes, thrown in prison more than once. But he's telling the Philippian church, who he loved, who he just, hey, as you see in me, let it become in you. He's talking about disciples. The first church made disciples. Then he make little communes. Happy, good, lucky church. Ha, ha, ha. Oh, it's all about me. And then you turn on each other because we don't have the spirit. So we're not walking in the fruit of the spirit. We're just a happy community. It's not your pastor's fault. He's been conditioned. He doesn't know. It's that spirit that's in the church today. He has to learn to rebuke it. And he has to learn to make disciples because he's going to be beaten worse than you and me if he does not repent. That's from the Lord. If there be therefore any consolation, this is chapter 2 now, there therefore any consolation in Christ, if any comfort of love, if any fellowship of the Spirit, if any bowels of, bowels of mercy, fulfill ye my joy that you be like-minded, having the same love, being of one accord of one mind. Let nothing be done through strife or vainglory, but in loneliness of mind, let each esteem other better than themselves. Look not every man on his own things, but every man also on the things of others. Are we looking out for the world? Do we even care that the world's going to hell without Jesus? Look at the Spirit again. You know, I don't mean to attack Joel Osteen, but the Spirit behind Joel Osteen. He had a chance to tell the whole world that they need Jesus Christ, that there's only one way to heaven. Jesus Christ is the way, the truth, the life. No one comes to the Father but by him. But he says, well, I don't know. I know some Hindus. They love God. I can't judge their heart. So he told the whole world they don't need a Savior. Are you telling the world they don't need a Savior by our silence? Because we're ashamed of the gospel of Christ? Because we're ashamed or we're afraid to speak? Or because we want the world to accept us? You know, one of the worst things that's happening right now is the new evangelists who want to come out and show God they love the world, want to show the world that they love them, but they agree not to proselyte. They agree not to preach the gospel of Christ. Why they come out? That's the new evangelism that's going on. That's such phony. There's no power in that. You haven't picked up your cross. The pastors haven't taught you. They haven't learned themselves what it is to pick up their crosses and follow after them. They've been conditioned by hundreds of years of this is how a church is supposed to look. And it's not. We're supposed to be creating disciples like the first church. 
let this mind be in you, which is also in Christ Jesus, who, being in the form of God, thought it not robbery to be equal with God, but made himself of no reputation and took upon him the form of a servant and was made in the likeness of men. And being found in fashion as a man, he humbled himself and became obedient unto death, even the death of the cross. Wherefore God has highly exalted him and given him a name which is above every name, that the name of Jesus every knee should bow, of things in heaven and things in earth and things on the earth, and that every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Wherefore, now listen to this, my beloved, as you have always obeyed, not as in my presence only, but now much more in my absence. Work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. Oh, he doesn't mean to be scared. Yeah, yes, he does. If we're not going to reverence God by becoming one of his disciples, we better fear his judgments and justice. So work out your salvation means it's a continual process as we become Christ-like in his nature. And we're not going to become Christ-like in our little community. We become Christ-like when we follow the Lord and allow the Lord to teach us. When we pick up our crosses and follow after him. Again, grace is the power of God. Grace is to be used by God. It is to suffer for his sake. That's grace. Power is to suffer for his sake and to live in the image as a disciple of Jesus Christ. We are called into the image of discipleship. We are called into the image of Jesus Christ by not denying the power, by welcoming the power through the cross. So we're going to talk about the cross. I have a whole bunch of scriptures in another video that's going to talk about the power of the cross. So let's consider that straight and narrow gate. Let's consider it. Are we the light? Are we the salt? Are we disciples of Jesus Christ? Are we following Jesus? Enter ye in at the straight gate, for wide is the gate, and broad is the way that leads to destruction, and many there will be which go in thereof. Because straight is the gate, and narrow is the way which leads unto life, and few there be that find it. When we accept Jesus Christ, we found the way. But it's truth and his life, becoming his disciple, willing to bear the shame of the cross, willing to bear the power of the cross, willing to become his disciples and preach to every street corner, everywhere we go, Jesus Christ crucified for our sins and Father Rosen for our justification and understand what our justification really is. It's how we enter that straight and narrow gate. Few will find it. Yes. This world is being ran over because we decided we want to make it by ourselves and not becoming disciples of Jesus Christ. The Western world is being run over right now. When we had the power and authority through the living God, through Christ Jesus our Lord, to speak his word and stop the evil. It's a spiritual warfare. We're going to talk about that in the next video. Yeah. It's because we got to know. It's because we see the darkness doesn't mean that we don't have authority over it. We're $31 trillion in debt. Do you believe God? Can erase that debt? I do. He's all powerful, but he's waiting for us. He is waiting for us. So if, if we're not willing to be a suffering servant, we cannot be his light, his salt, his disciple, for his pride to make salvation all about ourselves. Making a straight, narrow gate much harder to find. But the good news is this. I'm going to leave with you good news. Those who are willing to pick up their cross daily and will find the cross. If you go to Jesus and ask him, hey, what is, what's this guy talking about? 
what is this cross? I mean, I know the cross, I know what you did for us, but what is it to pick up the cross and follow after you, Lord? The Lord will show you. The Lord will show you. And I'm going to leave you with this. The cross is our power. The cross is our peace. And the cross is our purpose. We're going to talk about that in the next video. So this is Rick Porter. This is Union Christ. Come together. Discipleship is needed. Discipleship is what you're called to be, a disciple of Jesus Christ. We are called into discipleship. That's the body of Christ. Come together as one. Stepping out beyond yourself. Become a disciple of Jesus Christ. That is coming one. That's the same mind that Paul is talking about. How Jesus Christ became a bondservant, became flesh, became a bondservant even unto death. And we're calling to that same death. That mind that was in Christ, let it be in you. And you will be a disciple of Jesus Christ. And you will find the straight and narrow gate. And we can even turn the evil if enough of us come together. And we can even take this land back. We can chase darkness away. People who are full of darkness don't understand they're full of darkness. Especially when the light is hidden in their pews. God bless you. I love you.